Wow, look at that. Nice Jeep suspension. Whole new it, we're stored at front end. Check out this beautiful three inch lift on Project Vector, guys. But the most important thing you wanna do after a lift is this. We got a post lift video. Some stuff to do, some stuff you wanna consider after you do a lift get to your Jeep. And uh, here we go, we're gonna start it off by adjusting all the front suspension and uh, torquing everything down now that it's sitting at its proper ride height. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. I am underneath a Rec J and you can see that I have a whole nice new beautifully restored front end. We just lifted this baby about three and a half inches or so. And uh, now I'm gonna go through what you should do when you lift your vehicle. All right, first thing we're gonna do is make sure this baby is sitting flat, nice and smooth on its bushings. All right guys, so we have the Jeep sitting flat on the ground now. If you remember, I did not torque down anything on the suspension just yet. You wanna to torque it down when it's sitting at its ride height so you don't put uh, unnecessary tension on the bushing. So it's sitting flat, everything's nice and loose down there. I'm just gonna give this baby a little wiggle just to let everything, oh, I'll close the hood first. Let it all settle where uh, where it wants to be. All right, now we're gonna go down and torque some stuff up. All right, guys, here are all the lift components that I installed and the corresponding torque specs and approximation. If you want to know exactly what they are, I highly recommend you look them up yourself. But the first thing I did was I put on this Rough Country bracket for the track bar. Now these bolts right here, they get torqued to approximately 95 foot-pounds and these nuts up top get torqued to approximately 75 foot-pounds. Now these lower control arms, both frame side and axle side, do about 85 foot-pounds. This is the upper control arms. Uh, the top mounts up there in the frame, they get torqued to about 66 foot-pounds, and the lower ones about 55. And these 15 millimeter sway bar bolts I cranked them down to about 60 foot-pounds. After the sway bar is on, you could go ahead and install the sway bar end links. I don't have torque specs, I just made it as tight as I could. Uh, I don't have torque specs for this either, but I cranked this sucker down, probably about 60. New Rough Country shocks. I just cranked these down to about 30 foot-pounds down here, uh, nice and tight. And again, you wanna go ahead and reinstall new bushings. And you can come up here, so you can reinstall your bushing and washer. And then, I don't have a torque spec for the top, but just crush down this bushing till it flattens out and comes even with the washer. All right, I'm installing this Rough Country steering stabilizer. And once it's on, I'm going to torque down everything. I'm gonna to torque both the top bolts and the bottom bolt down to 55 foot-pounds. We got this tie rod down here, going up to the drag link right over here. That goes into your pitman arm. All these factory ball joints get torqued to about 55 foot-pounds right there on the castle nuts. Don't forget to reinstall your cotter pins. The hubs, they get three 12.13 millimeter bolts. They go in and there, one, two, and three right there those get torqued down to about 75 foot pounds all right gonna torque down this track bar track bar to axle is approximately 75 foot pounds as you can see i cut out a little bit more of this bracket so i could fit this new 17 millimeter nut on that came with this kit and now track bar to frame with this new rough country mount i'm gonna crank it down to 75 foot pounds also it's a nice beefy bolt. 
All right, next thing I'm gonna do is adjust the adjustable track bar I got from Rough Country. Now, if you look at the Jeep, you can see that the passenger side sticks out just a little bit more than the driver's side. There's some more meat right there, and what the track bar will do is you could uh, move it back and forth to get the axle sitting where you want it underneath the body of the Jeep. So we're gonna pull the axle a little bit more driver's side, but before you go start messing with it, you might wanna measure it. This is how I measured mine. So what I did was got myself some power cord and some extra brake boot adjusters. And look at this, you can see right here, we're sticking out about an inch away from the tire on this side. Let's go over here. And well, this is rubbing up against the tire. It's actually pushing it out. So we're gonna go and move it. So now we will adjust to pull the axle more driver's side. All right, here is my adjustment sleeve. I'm just gonna move these locks over and out of the way so you can see. Maybe not. <laughs> Let's go up. There we go. All right, eventually, as strong as you think you are, you will not be able to do it by hand. So go ahead and put on a nice big old pipe wrench and then you can start or finish rotating with this. All right, I realized I was turning it in the wrong direction. If you wanna get this sucker closer to the driver's side, you're gonna to wanna to rotate this thing down. So, here we go. All the way back the other way. All right, look at that, guys. There's the gap between the lettering on the driver's side, and there's the gap between the lettering on the passenger side. I think that's dead on balls accurate. Dead on balls accurate. It's an industry term. What the heck? How about one more My Cousin Vinny quote? What do you think they are? Identical? Identical. 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 <laughs> oh yeah, that's awesome. These babies fill up the wheel well real nice. All right, looks like the hardware provided by Rough Country is 16 millimeters. Hey, that's about 35 foot-pounds. That's not moving. All right, you're gonna have to adjust the position of the steering wheel. It's kinda in the 11, 10 o'clock position. And as you can see, the wheels are pointing straight ahead. Now, normally you drive up and down the driveway a few times, make sure everything's straight, but I'm gonna do that later and we still have to get an alignment after all. But uh, just to get this close, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna come down here, again under the Jeep, to the drag link. It's the one that's connected to the pitman arm right here. We're gonna loosen up these connections for this sleeve. Go, oh, get this sleeve nice and loose, and watch what happens when we rotate this sleeve. Going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. A little more. A little more. A little more. A little more. That's it. You there. Well, that just about does it for the front end of this Jeep. This Dana 30 is damn near perfect. Now I just gotta button up the rear. Also, if you're using these upper shock mount brackets, they get torqued to 18 foot-pounds. All right, guys. All the components of the lift are in. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this. Rear disc brake conversion. You can check that out in another video. Wow, 
There it is, Rec J on all fours. Looking real good. <laughs> Lift is done, but let's not get too excited just yet. We still gotta torque down the leaf spring bolts. Now we're gonna torque down the rear. We got a leaf spring bolt in the front, a leaf spring bolt at the top. Those two go to the body. We're gonna torque those down to 115 foot-pounds of torque. There's also a shackle bolt right underneath that body bolt. That shackle bolt is gonna get torqued down to 80 foot-pounds. All right, guys. So a lot of people, they get their new-to-me XJ, and uh, first thing they wanna do is throw a lift kit on it. Well, that's all well and good, fine and dandy, but uh, you don't know how long it's been since the diff was serviced, so if you're gonna put a lift on it, I highly recommend you change out your diff fluid. So here we go, this is a Dana 30 front diff, nothing special, stock 355 gears, uh, no limited slip or nothing like that, it's just a straight up diff fluid change. I'm gonna pop off all these little 13 millimeter nuts right here. There we go, we don't wanna lose our tag. This has got all our info on it, it's been painted over, but chuck that out of the way. Get rid of the rest of these. this top one on a little bit there we go I'm actually very excited to service this diff because I got new front axle seals take off this top one now you know what I probably should have cracked open this fill plug first I guess I got ahead of myself do that first make sure you can refill it <laughs> there <laughs> all good all right, got my little razor blade on my scraper. I'm just gonna scrape this baby clean. Let's make this squeaky clean with a little wire wheel. All right, let's hose this sucker out with brake clean. Right, don't forget your cover too. I don't know if your Dana 30 has it, but mine certainly does. We got a giant pit right underneath this carrier right here, right under this ring gear. It's a big hole, and you want to soak up all your brake clean because you don't want this solvent mixing with your fresh fluid. So we'll give this some time, let your brake clean evaporate, make sure it's all scooped up out of here. There. I'm going to apply a healthy amount of black gasket maker regular old RTV and we'll spread this out with our finger so it's nice and even and now we'll mush our cover back on line it up nice and neat find that top bolt hole again and thread it right in and these two on the left we'll put back on our little plate so we know what it is all right let's hand thread the rest of these on and we're just gonna snug all these up hand tight we're not gonna do any significant torquing until after the gasket maker sets up And again, we'll torque this later. And don't forget to reattach that pesky breather line that you may have forgotten to attach during your lifting process. All right, while we're waiting for our gasket to set up, now is a good time to go over and grease all your fittings, like on these ball joints here. Double check all your cotter pins, make sure they're all in. Wanna make sure all your steering is nice and sturdy. Uh, no loose, no wiggles. Don't want to miss a ball joint anywhere. You definitely want to be safe and avoid the death wobble. Alright, getting greasy with it. 
Okay, I can see that boot rising. That's a good sign. I see a flat boot rising. Rising. And rising. 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 And rising. Rising. There's a bathroom on the right. Grease your ball joints too. And speaking of drive shaft, if you lift your vehicle over three inches, you may want to consider a transfer case drop bracket. Now to drop your transfer case, you're going to need a transfer case drop kit. This is one from Rough Country. Now this is your transfer case up here. It is supported by this bracket down here, which is bolted into the unibody frame. And the goal is to lower it to decrease drive line angles. And when you're done with the project, it should look like this. But even though it's a simple concept, it's kind of involved. So stay tuned for the transfer case drop video. All right, we're gonna revisit this diff cover. Right now the RTV has set us up a nice custom gasket. So now what we're gonna do is just tighten everything down. That'll seal this gasket really well. All right, so we're gonna hand tighten everything in a crisscross pattern. Probably should have started at your uh, 12 o'clock and six o'clock, but it didn't. <laughs> so we're just gonna keep going around. Beautiful. Now let's fill this bad boy. All right, we got our full synthetic 75W90 gear oil. There we go. Whoop. <laughs> Nothing fancy about this stuff, except that it is in a nice squeeze bag. Oh, shit. <laughs> kind of like Gogurt. Very flimsy. Don't slip and spill. But yeah, it's so much easier to fill these things with this squeeze bag. Just kind of splooge it in right there. Drink it up. This is your Capri Sun, baby. Alright, next bag. Let's see if this will take a whole two quarts. Nope. Doesn't. A quart and a half. And we'll go ahead and tighten this back up. We're also changing the diff fluid in the rear. But I never liked how the Chrysler 8 and a quarter has the rubber fill plug. So we're going to remove this cover and replace it with a nice aluminum G2 cover. Check out the link in the description for this bad boy. All right, the next thing on my post lift punch list, something that not everyone might need to consider, especially you guys in the desert, but all you Northeast guys might want to consider the fluid film. I'm going to spray this snot all up in my newly cleaned and painted upper shock mounts so I could prevent any more rust from starting and spreading. All right, here we go. Again, this stuff is fluid film and it will protect you from rust and corrosion. is pretty cool it's based with lanolin lanolin it's uh, found in nature i guess it's in ducks feathers and sheep's wool Lan lanolin like like sheep's wool it's a natural uh water rejector and we want to keep this stuff water free because the water will lead to rust all right guys that just about does it for our post lift video one more thing to do is take this baby for an alignment. Sure, you could get it with a tape measure and some string and all that jazz, but I want this thing laser straight. Got nice new general grabbers on her, and I want them to wear as evenly as possible. Plus, I want the best ride possible for this awesome new resurrected XJ. So, that means we get to go take this for a drive on the road. Cross our fingers. I can't. Fingers are too fat. Whatever, let's go. All right, guys, we are driving the Rec J once again. This thing feels great. All the bushings feel tight. Steering is nice and tight. Uh, what is not to love about a fresh suspension? Um, one thing to keep in mind, guys, if you did do the disc brake conversion like I did in the back of this thing, uh, I used the Evolution Power Stop brakes. They are considered 
performance brakes. So you're gonna have to go through the bedding process. So I'm gonna do that soft braking right now as we go through the, uh, the back roads to the alignment shop. So we're gonna do that nice and neatly. Wanna make sure those rear disc brakes are bedded nicely. But everything else feels great. Uh, I can tell right off the bat that I probably miscalculated on the steering wheel alignment. It's just slightly off center, but yeah, I figured that. I just try to get it close. We'll let the alignment shop do the rest. Uh, yeah, man, this thing runs great. Uh, I can't wait to see how it does on the alignment. See how far out of whack it is after putting this thing up about three inches. So, all right, guys, uh, I'll catch you after the alignment. Woohoo! All right, guys, it's the next day. We had to leave this baby overnight. They were kind of booked, but we got our printout of our alignment. The last thing we needed to complete this post lift procedure punch list of video. Uh, let's go take a look, see what this says. We got this done at Firestone Tires on Montauk Highway in Mariches, New York. A lot of places won't touch lifted vehicles, but they know I do good work, so they didn't mind looking at this. We got ourselves the initial readings, and these are the final readings. This was within spec. This was slightly out of spec and still is out by just a couple tenths of a degree. The toe in, this is probably the most important part. You don't want your tires wearing crooked. So it did have some toe, uh, left and right and total. That was the amount of toe. It was out of spec. This is the range that you want it in and everything was adjusted and dialed right in perfectly. It drove great there and now it's even better. We don't have to worry about our tires wearing out of whack. So this is good to have. Get the printout so you know they actually did something. Don't waste your time on somebody that says their printer is broken. And if you're a local, check out these guys. Tell them Dan H sent you. So that's it. The alignment is done. <laughs> I'm so happy with how this Jeep came out. What a gorgeous, gorgeous, lift on a gorgeous xj can't call this rec j anymore i'm gonna have to start calling it resurrect j or something it is far from wrecked still a lot of things to do though we got some rust to uh, eliminate we got some floor pans to do but dang man that is looking good i love a stock looking xj all right guys thank you so much for taking the time to watch this post lift video a lot of people just want to throw some springs on it call it a day but i give you a bunch more detail. And I don't think I could have fit it all in just uh, one lift video. So again, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't seen the lift video, check it out. Also check out the rear disc brake conversion uh, and all the other stuff I did to uh, old Rec J. <laughs> all right, guys, that's a wrap. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next project. Peace. All right, this thing definitely needs a Dan H sticker. My eyesight ain't all that good. Sorry, other people could see how good it looks. Oh, I mean, I <laughs> there we go. Welcome to the fleet, yeah. Reg J. <laughs> Beautiful.